But I think we get so busy with life, you know, we're kind of running around like a caffeinated squirrel, and uh, we miss out on the fact that life is happening all around us, and that the things that we could do, the change that we can affect, might be right there around us, and we just have to see it differently. So I want to tell you two stories today, but before I do that, I want to ask you to think back with me. Think back to the earliest moment in your childhood that you can remember that someone did something for you or showed you something that allowed you to see something differently. For me, it was fifth grade. I'm the tall, dorky kid in the back. This is Gigi, the girl I was in love with, um, because she could kick the ball farther than any boy, and uh, she always hit me with the dodgeball, so I think she liked me too. This guy creeped me out. I don't know what he's doing in the picture. But the, but the story is really about this guy here, Mr. H. Um, now, quick history. Fifth grade already has its drama, right? It's, it's pretty, pretty dramatic to begin with, um, especially if you're tall and new to the area. My mom had me when she was in high school, and uh, she's an amazing lady. She's one of my heroes, but, you know, she did the best she could. Early 70s, raising the kid by herself. Um, she married my, my stepdad, who moved us from Chicago to Tucson, and then ended up being a really, really bad deal. Um, Unfortunately, he abused us physically and emotionally, and so um, my life pretty much sucked in fifth grade on top of the normal. And so school to me was like one of the few things that I could go to and have an escape. I could do almost whatever I wanted. I mean, it was great. All I did was draw, go to recess, eat, draw, and go to recess, right? That's what school was for me. So as you can imagine, my grades were pretty horrible. And so one day, Mr. H walked by my desk, and he goes, hey, Justin, this next book report that you do draw it. I was like, what? He's like, I want you to draw it. And so this is the kind of art that I created back then. I know it's pretty amazing. It's a griffin. I don't remember the mythical powers it had back then, but look it up. It's pretty amazing. And um, this was my incredible logo work back then, J.A. I know. I'm going to TM that. Don't steal it. Um, but uh, something happened when he told me that. I got excited about school. I think I sprinted home for the first time ever. And I started ripping books out of my bookshelf. I, outside of drawing, I also read ferociously. And I read weird things. Like, I think the book I read was about mythical creatures. I think it was about gnomes. Um, yes, I'm a nerd. Um, but the next day I went back to class. I presented my report. I drew it. And I felt alive. And it was amazing. And that's all because Mr. H took the time to see me differently. He didn't just walk by this kid who was having bad grades. So, why is this important? Well, there's seven billion of us now. I don't know what that number means. I can't fathom that. I know what this number is, and that is everyone in this room, I want you to think about one simple thing. Can it, can an idea change the world? Can an action, can something we do change? But more importantly, can you change the world? Can your idea, can the way you see things change? And so I want to continue telling a, a couple of stories I think might uh, uh, illustrate this a little better. I'll come back to Mr. H in a second. Um, that is supposed to say, um, it's not what you uh, look at that matters, it's what you see. This is a Henry David Thoreau quote. My buddy Bob gave it to me. And um, what's great about that quote is, um, I like collecting quotes. I'm kind of nerdy like that. Um, you can see a little better on the side screens. Um, but to be honest with you, I didn't really know what it meant. Meaning, I didn't know what the difference between looking and seeing were. I, I had no idea. So I did what anyone does these days. I Googled it. I'm assuming this type's not going to work either. But, uh, so if you look up look, um, it says to view something with um, an intent or reason. I get that. I think we're all pretty smart here. We can figure that out. Um, but when I saw, when I looked up C, something really kind of magical happened for me. And that was, C was to notice something um, that you weren't looking for. And something really amazing happened for me then because I realized that that's the part of life, that's the moment where we're like, ah, that aha moment, right? Where something happens around us that we weren't expecting, right? Uh, we create something that we weren't expecting. This idea comes out of nowhere. And I think that is really sort of the magic sauce of life. Like if we can have more of that, if we can somehow build that into our day to day, then um, I think life becomes more exciting and, and more rich and more full. Um, so my first question is, how do you see? Do you go through life looking? 
missing what's going on around you? Or do you create space to, to see things differently? And I'll talk more about that in a second. So um, the next moment in my life that really kind of changed the way I go about my day-to-day is I had an opportunity to experience going to Africa. Now, I don't understand extreme poverty. I don't really get it. It really bothers me. And you might say, what do you mean you don't get it? I don't know how it exists in today. I can go to the grocery store and pick 18 different types of peanut butter, but we can't feed the poorest of the poor in our world. I just don't get it. So through a, a bunch of different connections, I ended up meeting an organization called Life in Abundance. And they work in the poorest of the poor areas of Africa. And so um, I contacted them and I said, hey, I want my team and I to get together with you and, and do something amazing. I wanna, I wanna understand poverty. And he's like, great, uh, but if you wanna work with us, you have to go, you have to see, you have to see our work. And um, it sounded kind of exciting, but I'm a dad of four, I run a company, and I don't think my wife was super pumped about me being gone for two or three weeks, going through Africa and some of the toughest and theoretically unsafe areas, but um, I went. and. Um, Life in Abundance works in some of these um, countries, Egypt, Somalia, um, uh, Kenya, Ethiopia, Sudan, my favorite, Djibouti. Come on, who doesn't like to say that? Um, And so I went, and I was fortunate enough to go with my good friend Brian, who's a photographer, and um, we both got on a plane and traveled 7,500 miles east to Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and also Nairobi, Kenya. And um, we spent uh, 10 days um, meeting some amazing people. I don't know how many of you have been in the developing world or in that matter in the slums, but it is a multi-sensory, horrible experience. Um, it's soul tearing. You, you, of course, smell the slums, but you see it, you hear it, you taste it, and it gets on you. And um, it's also amazing because you get to meet people and have experiences that you don't have in your day to day. For example, this little girl. We were at a Life in Abundance uh, dental and eye clinic, and um, I had to be honest with you, I'd had it. I couldn't do it anymore. I, I just like, what am I gonna do in Mathari slums of Nairobi, Kenya, right? I'm one guy. This is a huge problem. And um, I was sitting in a chair, and I remember looking across the room, and I saw this little girl um, put on her eyeglasses for the first time. And you know what she did? She went like this. And I was like, I, I don't, what happened? And then I got it. For the first time in her life, she saw her beautiful little hands, clearly. She saw the floor she was standing on. She saw her beautiful feet. And I realized that that's how I go through life. I go through life not seeing what's around me, not being thankful for what I have, and not taking advantage of the way I'm uniquely made. And I decided that day that I wanted to do something about it, that I wanted to be part of organizations to do work that helped people see And I think Ted is a part of that. I think you guys are a part of that. We have an opportunity to, you know, speak to people and work with people and do things in our life that can really help people see things differently. And I think that's the whole crux. When you take the time to see the world from a different perspective, things start to change. So one day I came to the office and I was having a hard time processing uh, um, Africa. And um, my buddy Brian, again, did something amazing. He sent me this video and uh, he goes, do you remember these kids? And I was like, yeah, but um, what I kept thinking about is the, 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 these kids that we, we met on our first trip, their community sees them as, as trash, as vermin, as not worth it. And so I want to ask you what you see.
<clears throat> so what did you see? I see hope. I see the future. Um, it's just a really moving experience. And I think it's great for us to get out of our comfort zone and, and see things that we don't see, you know, day to day. Um, why do you need this? What's my point? What am I trying to say here? And, and, and I think it's, it's really this. That if we take the time to see, um, to pause, to look at the world around us, it keeps you open to the unexpected. Um, Mr. H didn't just see a kid that was failing his class. He saw a kid who liked to draw. And seeing me that way, he did something different. He encouraged me in a way that was uniquely um, profound to myself. Working with organizations that, um, you know, empower the poor, um, that's not something I thought I'd ever do, but I'll probably spend the rest of my life going to Africa. But I think it's good for us to practice pausing every day. This is a great example of that. You're going to see 10 or 11 more speakers that I think are going to blow your mind. And you have an opportunity to see those um, different points that they're going to try to make and apply that to your life, and I think that's so exciting. So... I want to end with fifth grade. I was telling some of my friends about Mr. H's effect on my life, and they said, hey, man, you should really go out and try to find him and, and tell him about what he did for you. And I was like, oh, it's, it's like 30 years, oh, geez, over 30 years ago. Uh, he's not going to remember me. In fact, I don't know, maybe he was gone. I, I had no idea. So since I'm a knucklehead, it took me about a year to finally get up the courage to search him out and find him. And I found his son, and his son connected me to him. And I'll never forget that day I got on the phone. I was like, hey, Mr. H, this is Justin Aarons. You probably don't remember me. And he goes, whoa, 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 yeah, I remember you, Justin. How are you? And it's amazing. You know how you, like, smell something or you watch a movie or you hear some voice and it takes you back to that point in your life? I went back to that moment where I just felt good and safe and wonderful about myself. Mr. H brought that to me. I was like, oh, Mr. H, it's so good to, to hear your voice. And I got to tell you something. You know, um, I'm a designer now, and the way you allowed me to think through things visually is how I see my day-to-day. -day. I mean, that's what I do. I see things in shapes and colors. And if you told me a math problem, I'd see it in my mind. Um, hopefully, I'd get it right, but, you know, I'd, I'd visualize it. And I said, but I got to tell you something else I don't think you knew. Um, that simple act, <clears throat> I think, saved my life. I had a really bad time in my life, and I was thinking about crazy stuff. And your actions changed everything. As you can tell, I'm an emotional guy, and so we were both crying together. You can hug me later, please. Um, <laughs> and uh, so we had, a great, we had a great talk, right? We had this really great moment, and I was like, oh, man, this is amazing. So we exchanged our, you know, our, our mail addresses, and I told him I'd send him some samples of my work, and you know, told him to take care and everything. And so, you know, a week went by. And um, I get home one day from work. And I find this tube on my doorstep. So I'm like, oh, sweet, my, my wife bought me a poster or something. That's cool. So, you know, I'm opening it up. And I pulled out what was inside. And I couldn't believe it. He'd kept all my pictures. How awesome is that? So he saw me that day, but in doing that, changing his MO and loving a kid and encouraging him in a special way, we change each other. And so as you get ready for a great day of TEDx and you leave here and you think about life and you go through the day, I encourage you to practice pausing and trying to see differently. So my challenge to you for the day is simply this. Are you going to look or are you going to see? Thank you.